2020 has been a challenging year, but it's also been a year that's seen several exciting car launches. And what's more exciting than to see a car, to drive a car and feel a car that's been on Indian roads for several years, but is now offered in an all new package. Yes, the third generation of the Hyundai i20 has hit the Indian roads and it makes massive promises when it comes to styling, its exterior, interior, cabin, engine options, transmission, feature list, a whole lot more. We are taking an in-depth look at each of these aspects in our first drive review of the third generation Hyundai i20, so stay tuned. When I first saw the i20 2020 a few weeks back for our first look review, the car looked absolutely majestic, it gleamed and it perhaps could have looked spectacular because it was propped up on a stage with all the spotlight right on this car. Out here, under the natural light and out on the open road, well, the i20 still continues to gleam and shine almost as much. That's thanks to this nice red color on our test unit, which really brings out the contrasting parametric dual pattern front grille, which is completely reworked. On either side are sleek projector LED units with integrated DRLs, while the fog lamps are now in an inverted blackened casing to further the sporty appeal. Adding a bit of muscle to the sporty profile are twin character lines on the bonnet. The bonnet has also been sloped down to give an aerodynamic visual appeal and performance capability to the new i20. Character lines themselves are on the side as well, around the door handles, as well as under the body of the side door. The alloys look very familiar, but look also very sporty on the i20 profile, with the circular wheel arches complementing the appeal. The windows are large and generous, while a rare quarter glass has been incorporated around the C-pillar. Being a Hyundai, chrome additions were a given. As such, you get chrome on the door handles and a chrome strip connecting the two tail lights at the rear. The Z-shaped LED tail lights do give this car a very youthful appeal. Press of a button and the tailgate is unlocked for 311 litres of storage space. Yes, the i20 does have a larger boot space, but it's also slightly longer, slightly wider than the Elite i20. What this means, at least the promise, is that it's got more space on the inside. The proof of the pudding in this particular case is in the sitting, so let's find out. A lot of changes greets you the moment you step inside the new i20. That this here is the i20 isn't instantly evident when you step inside and that's thanks to all the changes that Hyundai have brought into the cabin of this vehicle. There is a nice floating platform like feel under the window line which then comes together almost seamlessly onto the dash which has a horizontal layout with the AC vents very nicely integrated into the paneling. While there are hard plastics here and there, but there is no doubting that the premium quotient on the new i20 has been upped by several notches. The orientation, the layout of the dash is slightly inclined towards the driver and a lot of car makers these days are doing this to give the driver a more engaging experience when he or she is putting the car to its limits or even generally cruising down roads. One of my favorite highlights of this vehicle is the large 10.25 inch infotainment screen which, despite its really huge size, negates any sort of screen glare from uh, the sun or other elements. Now, it does still reflect a little bit of what's inside the car, but everything is very legible. The figures, the statistics, the information, the media screen, the navigation, everything is very, very eye-catching. And uh, just one glance and you'll get all the information that this puts out to the driver and to the occupants. The driver display with the TFT screen is also really large and it follows Hyundai's philosophy of putting out a digital screen with very, very large dials. So all the information is very legible to the driver when he's on the move. The controls for the AC vents are uh, basically buttons and they are large, easy to use, offer decent feedback. And they're not like those large dials with display that you see in some of the other Hyundai cars. And personally, I like those dials because 
They offer a better feedback and a better display and a better user experience perhaps. How can you really get a Hyundai car and not expect it to be loaded, packed with features? So what does the i20 get in terms of feature list? Well, most of the top end feature lists are of course in the top end variant and this here is the Asta O. So it gets uh, wireless charging with a cooling pad. So that's one way of ensuring your phone doesn't get heated up, especially in the summer months when it's on the charge. There is what Hyundai calls the Oxy Boost air purifier and right now it's telling me that the PM 2.5 level is at 160. Yes, we are in Delhi, it's November, it is absolutely chock-a-block, the pollution level is really high. Hyundai claims that this Oxy Boost air purifier well gets an oxygen cylinder which uh, comes with the HEPA filter on the side so all of this combined to make the cabin uh, the air inside a lot more cleaner the seats have a good level of cushioning and while they aren't ventilated and that's a big miss quality of stitching appears to be at par with what is expected inside a Hyundai the same level of refinement, the same level of comfort is very evident on the back seat as well. Now we spoke about how the i20 now is longer and wider. Longer, well the benefits are definitely there, it's very evident and especially when you sit here in the rear seat. Now for all of you who've been following my reviews for HD Auto, you know that I like to keep the driving seat as far back as is possible. Same is the case here as well and yet I have a whole lot of space for my knees, decent amount of leg room and really really generous under thigh support. So really on these three counts it's a big thumbs up to Hyundai designers. Headroom is decent, I'm 5'8", somebody a little taller than me, maybe 6 feet, uh, may just feel a little claustrophobic but even three passengers side by side the shoulder room would be adequate. There is, of course, the central armrest. It doesn't have uh, cup holders, but it still suffices for most parts for two passengers. You also get rare AC vents, a fast charging USB point here for your smartphone. The Bose speakers are, of course, something I've already mentioned. Overall, everything is tuned to make your long journeys really comfortable on the back seat. And if that's not enough, well, you also have an electric one-touch sunroof making its debut in the i20. Overall though, the cabin of the new i20 has travelled a long, long distance. But how does the car actually travel on city roads and on open stretches? Let's get set and go. The i20 is offered in multiple engine options now. So there is the one liter turbo petrol engine, which is brand new, at least in the i20. Then there is the 1.5 liter diesel engine. And uh, that just shows that uh, once again, how Hyundai is persisting with its diesel. And they say there is a very, very strong demand for the diesel. But the bread and butter of the i20 really is the one that I'm in currently, the 1.2 car up petrol engine with the five speed manual transmission. Now, there are multiple transmission options on offer in the i20 as well. So you have the IMT, which is a segment first in the premium hatchback. There is the DCT, IVT, and a whole lot more, but we are going to focus on this five speed manual gearbox unit. It is exactly what I thought that uh, a Hyundai gearbox, a manual gearbox would be like, because it's short, the throws are precise, and you don't really have to juggle around all that much. Keep it on the, in the lower uh, gear shifts and you should be okay to get a move along. The flip side of the gearbox though is that when you're pushing the car, say in the fourth or the fifth gear, uh, 1500 to 1800 is not where the i20 is uh, really comfortable at. But the moment the rev band hits 1800 and definitely above the 2000 RPM band, that is where this unit truly comes alive. Of course, it's not going to be a turbo engine-like characteristic on this vehicle, but you still get a move on. So the 1.2 litre petrol in the manual transmission can be a good option between a blend of city driving and the occasional highway. I know there are a lot of people who are not big fans of the Hyundai steering, but once again, the i20 gets a steering setup which is on the lighter side and that makes traffic conditions and i20 in those traffic conditions 
quite a breeze to uh, move forward. Getting a move on as long as you have a perfect control over the gear shifts is uh, pretty easy. I'm doing 80 now, like that alarm said, and I'm still in fourth. And that's the top gear, the fifth. And when I do hit the top gear, well, that is where I sort of do miss that sixth gear. And a number of cars are being offered with that sixth gear option. I know this is a 1.2 liter, but uh, still having that top gear in the six uh, figure would have been better but uh, well nonetheless the five gears have to do the suspension setup inside the i20 is slightly on the stiffer side and frankly I would have liked it to be a little softer because uh, the speed breakers when I tackle them at moderate speeds I do get a sense of the road and well that was this this particular one that I just crossed well that was not a speed breaker there was there was no road at all and uh, while I did feel the bumps and all, I must commend Hyundai because the amount of body roll uh, that I experienced was, well, pretty minimal. And that's thanks to how these seats too are designed. There's a bucket-like design to it, not just at the back, but also here uh, under my um, seat. So that sort of gets you really cocoon well and uh, confident enough to tackle the turns really well. Having said that, coming back to the suspension setup, a slightly less uh, stiff suspension could have played a better complementary role to the comfort here. Now just to give you an idea of how much uh, the Hyundai people have actually worked on the NVH levels, I'm going to open down this window. And now I'm closing it. The wind noise is pretty minimal when you have all the windows up, the sunroof is also shut down and the road noise, take my word for it, is also at a minimum. There is a little bit of uh, road grumble from the tyres that are coming into the cabin but really that's negligible and I'm really paying very very close attention to find some flawback as far as the NVH levels are concerned but apart from that, this car has excellent NVH levels and that's something that is always a good sign whether you're driving it in city conditions or out on open roads. Cornering is also precise to the point it does take the turns exactly where you want it to and uh, once all of that is done, sorted, dusted, you can just slam the brakes and bring everything to a halt. Now the brakes perhaps could have been a little more uh, punchy right now, they are a little on the spongier side but this is me nitpicking once again. Uh, overall, it does respond to the command and should be okay uh, in emergency situations. Now, if you were sitting here and I did not tell you when you weren't paying attention, you won't really know that we've actually swapped cars. It's still the red i20, but there is a whole lot more happening under the hood and here where the transmission is concerned. That's because we're inside the IMT turbo variant of the i20. Yes, IMT technology makes its debut in the premium hatchback segment and the turbo engine is of course an absolute spectacular superstar as far as Hyundai engine options are concerned. Hyundai has loaded its uh, cars with this engine option and say like the Venue and the Aura and the Grand i10 Neos and these cars have done really well in terms of the response that these have received for their turbo engine. So it's really very little surprise to me that uh, the i20 is now a hot hatch thanks to that uh, turbo engine. But is the turbo i20 really just powerful in its name or does it actually perform to its name and credentials and the statistics? Well, let's take a look. Yeah, it just jumps forward the moment you ask it to and uh, the gear shifts again are very, very short and crisp, precise. They slot themselves in the required gear very very nicely so really this car is truly just seems like it is where the i20 is at its best the imt in turbo variant is probably the trump card that uh, hyundai has up its sleeves but if you're opting for the asta imt turbo it may make a lot of practical sense to buy it in terms of the pricing structure but you will have to forgo certain features most notable amongst them is that this car doesn't have an electric sunroof. It does have no sunroof at all, in fact. Now, sunroofs are gaining a lot of popularity. A lot of car makers are equipping uh, their vehicles with the sunroof. And 
if you ask me personally i don't see that as a big miss considering the climatic conditions in india but of course everybody has his or her own preferences and while the imt in the asta variant does offer a lot of drive convenience and a whole lot of power well doesn't get that electric sunroof the i20 to me has been synonymous with style and spirit it's stylish to look at and spirited to drive and in the third generation just builds on those qualities it's backed by feature list that's long and elaborate and there is a whole lot of more space on the inside but on the flip side this premium hatchback does command a premium price tag as well especially when you compare it to some of its direct rivals to someone who's on a budget the i20 may seem a little aspirational considering that the asta o with the dct transmission is priced at over rupees 11 lakh which means it's entering bigger territories of subcompact and compact suvs my personal favorite would be the turbo imt in the asta variant which is a nice blend of price and the feature list but overall generally when it comes to the third generation i20 it's a big big step forward and mounts a massive challenge in the premium hatchback segment what do you think about this new car do let us know and follow us for more such videos hit the like button and stay tuned to hd auto for more such in depth videos and reviews thank you so much for watching